In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, that we may worthily celebrate together these sacred mysteries. Let us call to mind the need for the forgiveness of our sins and beg God's mercy. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to call all sinners unto yourself. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you plead for us now at the right hand of God the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit we dare to call Father, bring, we pray, to perfection within our hearts that spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised us. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The Lord cried loud for me to hear. Come, you scourges of the city. With that, I saw six men coming down from the direction of the upper gate, which faces the north, each with a destroying weapon in his hand. In their midst was a man dressed in linen with a writer's case at his waist. They entered and stood beside the bronze altar. Then he called to the man dressed in linen with the writer's case at his waist saying to him, pass through the city, through Jerusalem and mark a towel on the foreheads of those who mourn, moan and groan over all the abominations that are practiced within it. To the others I heard the Lord say, pass through the city after him and strike. Do not look on them with pity nor show any mercy. Old men, youths and maidens, women and children, Wipe them out, but do not touch any marked with the towel. Begin at my sanctuary. So they began with the men, the elders who were in front of the temple. Defile the temple, he said to them, and fill the courts with the slain. Then go out and strike in the city. Then the glory of the Lord left the threshold of the temple and rested upon the cherubim. These lifted their wings, and I saw them rise from the earth, the wheels rising along with them. They stood at the entrance of the eastern gate of the Lord's house, and the glory of the God of Israel was up above them. Then the cherubim lifted their wings, and the wheels went along with them, while up above them was the glory of the God of Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The glory of the Lord is higher than the skies. The glory of the Lord is higher than the skies. 
Praise you, servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord, both now and forever. The glory glory of the Lord Lord is is higher higher than than the the skies. From the rising to the setting of the sun is the name of the Lord to be praised. High above all nations is the Lord. Above the heavens is his glory. The glory glory of the Lord Lord is is higher higher than than the the skies. Who is like the Lord our God who is enthroned on high and looks upon the heavens and the earth below? The glory glory of the the Lord Lord is is higher higher than than the skies. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the disciples, If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have won over your brother. If he does not listen, take one or two others along with you so that every fact may be established on the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, then tell the church. If he refuses to listen even to the church, then treat him as you would a Gentile or tax collector. Amen, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth, shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, amen, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything for which they are to pray, it shall be granted to them by my heavenly Father. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, There I am in the midst with them. The Gospel of the Lord. The Sacrament of Reconciliation, going to confession, is a wonderful and great sacrament of God's grace for God's people. And let me just start there by saying it is in that just a wonderful thing. However, I guess like with everything, there can be a drawback, a pitfall, or a disadvantage. Not that the sacraments have those, but if there is any drawback to the sacrament of reconciliation, it's that it relies upon self-reporting. Yes, it's very subjective. The penitent, the one that comes to confession, hopefully has performed a good examination of conscience, thinking back about the past few weeks or months or however long it has been, and taking into consideration with maybe a resource, good questions available to him or her, the penitent from which to think about in one's mind what has not been right, what has been sinful. So I say it relies upon um, that examination of conscience done well, but once again in that nature it is subjective. And as a result, there might be a chance that he or she, the penitent, might not remember or discover or know all the sins that have been committed by him or herself. The reconciliation process that we're given 
in the Gospel of Matthew today, this 18th chapter, tries to overcome that subjectivity. If you really listen close to that first sentence, it says, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between the two of you alone. So it's the actual one who has been sinned against that goes and tells the one who committed the offense, this is what happened. Um, let's be involved in the process of forgiveness. And of course it gives other stages as well. But there's a certain objectivity about this penitential process. Um, not so much self-reporting, but another that is doing it for him or her. If it only could be that way in our uh, confessional, but of course to safeguard the penitent and other things as well, that objectivity does not exist really, except in the penitent who is truly sorry and might include, and I kind of instruct penitents along these lines, add on and anything else that I may have sinned or sinned against, but am blocked from seeing it currently. Always a good way to finish one's confession. So we come before the Lord and we ask God to bless us with the wonderful goodness of his mercy and forgiveness of our sins here today and exploring maybe in a little more depth uh, how we go to confession, the steps we take and the processes involved flowing from the scriptures of the Gospel of Matthew. And let us rise to offer our prayer of the faithful. We pray for God's church. Through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, she may continue to faithfully build the kingdom here on earth. We pray to the Lord. For all elected and appointed officials, may God increase within them the desire to protect life. We pray to the Lord. For those who are sick, may they experience the healing touch of the Lord Jesus in their lives. We pray to the Lord. For the community of faith that has gathered here today, may the grace of baptism continue to help us to witness to the truth. We pray to the Lord. And for those who have died marked with the sign of the cross, May they be brought into new life with Christ Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord our God, through the waters of baptism you have adopted us. We ask that you hear us and answer our needs today and always through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and the work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. By this mystery of water and wine, the Lord share in our humanity.
and we in his divinity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and the work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Sisters and brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. Be pleased, Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mysteries of our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right truly right and just that we should give you thanks, O God, Almighty Father, for all you do in our world through your beloved Son. For, through the human ra for though the human race is divided by dissension, we know that by testing us, you change our hearts and you always prepare us for reconciliation. Even more, by the power of your Spirit, you move our hearts so that enemies may speak to each other again, adversaries can join hands, and people seek to meet together. By the working of your power, it comes about that hatred is overcome by love, revenge gives way to forgiveness, and discord is changed to respect. Therefore, as we give you ceaseless thanks with the angels and saints, we cry out to your majesty here on earth, and without end together we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend towards sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sinfulness, you brought us back to be reconciled, Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now celebrating that reconciliation that Christ has brought us, we entreat you to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine by the outpouring of your Holy Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life so as to set us free as he reclined at supper, Jesus himself took bread into his hands and giving you thanks, said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing into his sacred hands, confessing your mercy, and then gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of love, we now offer to you what you have bestowed upon us, this perfect sacrifice of reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us together with your Son, and in this saving banquet to graciously endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all peoples, and may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Apostolic Administrator, and all the bishops and your entire people. For just as you have gathered us now around the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with her blessed spouse, Saint Joseph, with your blessed apostles and with all the saints, and with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and on a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day and daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. <clears throat> Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be.
Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, Lord, and confirm within us the light of your truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go forth in the peace of Christ. Amen. Thanks be to God.